today I'm going to be talking about direct marketing, specifically for specialty crop producers, um, and just kind of how it can help them and what to consider. Uh, some examples of direct marketing are farmers markets, CSAs, or community supported agriculture, online sales, you pick operations or farm stands and farm stores, pretty much anytime the farmer is selling directly to the consumer. So a farmer's market is a great place for a specialty crop producer to get started. You have great interaction with your customers and other farmers. It, it's a good place to develop contacts um, and to even advertise other aspects, other avenues of your farm. Uh, one thing or a couple of things to consider is the time spent at the market and just how labor intensive it can be to travel to those markets, set up the hours spent there, the cleanup afterwards, all of that um, just needs to be taken into consideration. And in Alabama, the only thing needed to go to one of these is a grower's permit. But some farmers markets do have their own fees and permits that they require. And a lot of farmers also, they see that the cooperation and the competition with other farmers, they're both just as important. And it can be pretty profitable. There's no middleman, but you just need to consider the time and the labor spent there. It's one of those tricky things, like I just said, it can be profitable, but it's just the combination of prices, volume sold, and the high time demands that contributes to how profitable that venture can be. Another avenue to go, uh, to go with direct sales are CSAs, community supported agriculture. Um, and that is just when, is when a customer, they purchase a share up front um, of a farm's crop. And as those crops come into season, those customers receive a weekly box um, of a variety of produce grown on that farm. CSAs often involve farm visits, volunteers, uh, and potluck dinners. It's a lot of just relationships with those customers that you um, that have bought the shares in your farm. They like to think of it as their farm. Um, and every CSA is unique. Um, really, there's no setup that's exactly the same farm to farm. And they've just they've recently had a surge in pop popularity. That's why I like to mention them. Um, and a lot of farmers like them as well because they have kind of a decreased level of risk because those, those customers are paying the farmers up front. The, farm to, the farmer doesn't have to worry about if this is sold, if this is going to sell. They already have that baseline of what is sold and they just need to produce up to that baseline at, at the very least. They often produce more and sell it, but they know at least what they need to, what they need to grow and what's already sold. Um, another avenue is online sales. Um, this is not quite as, as popular here in Alabama, but I believe it's growing in popularity. It's really convenient for customers. I think people are just, especially after last year, customers got comfortable ordering more and more online. Uh, one of the drawbacks is it can seem a little less personal. You don't really have that farmer to consumer contact like you have on farm sales, like you have at farmers markets or CSAs. Um, and there's also some additional risk, liability and security, people purchasing things online, you need to have a pretty good uh, secure purchasing platform online. And on farm sales, this kind of encompasses, um, I'm using this to encompass UPICs and farm stands, but any on farm sales, need to consider the location. Uh, you can research some of the traffic counts on roads or nearby roads, but location is very important. You're gonna need signs. Um, I guess the less visible you are from the road, the more advertising and signs you're gonna need, but it's still gonna be helpful for you to be easily visible to people. Um, and it really, it's really gonna be helpful to have a scenic and attractive, a clean farm. And there is some additional liability that comes with these on-farm sales. Just anytime you have outside people on your farm walking around, you have to have that additional liability insurance. And um, there's also building standards, your required permits for any, any building that you construct. 
Um, and you pick operations. These are often thought to be very cost effective. The customers are essentially your labor, uh, your harvest labor. Uh, one of the drawbacks can be the hours spent and holidays, just the schedule, kind of like a, a tourist schedule. Whenever people want to be out, that's when you need to be open and catering to them. Um, it's often tied to agritourism. And there can also be, there's a couple of risks associated with it. If your weather's not that great, people, people are pretty unlikely to come out there and pick fruit in the pouring rain or in a storm. Um, and also because you have outside people coming to your farm and harvesting, they're often gonna cherry pick the best, the easiest to find produce. Some farmers think it's ineffective because of that, but it's also possible to salvage those potential losses by regularly harvesting um, or gleaning after them. Farm stands, these, <laughs> these have been around for ages. The needs of them vary greatly depending on the scale of the, of the operation. Some, I've seen some unmanned, unstaffed, some have one, one staff member there. And I've also seen huge ones with several, several uh, employees. There is, there's low pressure for crop availability as compared to a grocery store or a supermarket. Um, you can just kind of, you produce what you produce and that's what you have in your farm store and that's what the people have to choose from. Like I said before, it can, it can range from a self-serve stand up to a full-scale farm store. And with a farm store, I've, I've seen a, several of these pop up recently. There are several factors that affect it. Depends on the traffic, the location, prices, amount of advertising, whether, again, people coming out and doing things, shopping outside, um, activities outside greatly depend on how good the weather is, and then competition with other stores. Um, and there's a couple of other risks different from that vary from the other direct marketing channels. Uh, theft is one of them. You really wouldn't have to uh, worry about that as much with other like farmers markets. You have a closer eye there, but with a larger store, it's going to be harder to keep a handle on that. And also a farm store is going to have much higher overhead and labor costs, staffing costs. Um, you may have slimmer margins because it's set up more like a store, um, but it can often result in higher sales if managed well. Okay, and now I'm going to talk about a couple of things that are needed for any direct marketing venture. So number one is relationships with your customers. That's that can be a pro or con depending on the farmer. So the producer needs to have customer oriented skills. Some choose these direct marketing channels because they love talking to customers. They love the education aspect. They love getting direct feedback from the customers. So, some prefer to deal with customers um, as little as possible. That, that's probably going to be when they choose a wholesale marketing uh, marketing avenue. But it's key with this direct marketing that you need to have relationships with your customers, consistency in your orders and communications with your customers, because you're the face of the operation, the one they deal with. Um, and there's a lot of perks that come with it, like direct feedback. So you can hear, you can hear right from customers what they desire, what they want next season, what they like and didn't like about this year's uh, produce. And also there's risk associated with all of these avenues. So a farmer's market, farmer's market and a farm stand and a you pick operation, they're all gonna have varying customer turnout. That's one of the perks of CSA is the customers are already, they've already paid up front. So you really don't have to think about the amount of customers coming every day. You don't have to try to attract customers um, on a weekly basis. And also with those three, farmer's market, farm stand, you pick, there's potential for waste. But again, if it's managed well, it can be wildly successful and profitable. With a CSA, you're really, you're going to have a lot of labor up front recruiting those customers to purchase those shares. And then you're going to have, uh, so a lot of that marketing is going to handle, uh, a lot of that marketing, excuse me, a lot of that marketing is going to handle pre-season and then post-harvest, 
Um, during the season, you're really not going to have as much labor, just the harvesting. The weather can also have a big impact on all of these avenues. And so the time commitment is also another thing to consider when you're trying to pick, um, trying to decide which uh, marketing channel you want to go with. Uh, farmer's market, you're going to have time spent in harvest, travel, and sales. Um, like I just said, CSA, you're going to have more labor up front, coordination of a couple of days a week for customer pickup, farm stand. Farm stand and you pick, uh, those can both differ because you kind of set the hours. But again, the, the better hours you have, the better management, the more successful you're going to be. Um, and also just some general considerations with all of these. You're going to have a greater diversity of products when you're selling directly to the customers. A lot of times, I mean, there are farms that grow just one crop and they are uh, they sell just the season of that one crop. But a lot of people try to extend the season as far as they can grow a diverse amount of products. But it is usually in smaller quantities than wholesale. Um, you need to think about the time consumption, the time spent with each of these sales avenues. And again, the customer oriented skills of the producer. Um, but again, I'm going to look at some of the benefits, the price point, selling directly to the customer. You, you can charge that retail dollar, which is really important at this point because you're putting in all this labor and time and effort. You want to get that retail dollar. And also the cash income at farmers markets can be pretty helpful. Um, at a farmer's market, you can also advertise for other channels of your farm, and there's a very low barrier to entry at farmer's markets. So it can be really easy to get into, and you can sell your produce pretty much anywhere you want to travel. And also, uh, the big benefits related to a CSA are going to be the cash flow. You're not really going to have problems with cash flow because you're getting all that money up front and then uh, kind of sharing the risk with the customers and, and then you have that upfront cash and the upfront commitment from the customers um, and when you're trying to choose the right marketing channel for your farm uh, your first step is going to be to identify the channels that interest you then visit those farms markets of that type take notes and look at how well um, look around see what they do see how well they fit your goals look at the risk associated your lifestyle preferences, do you, do you want to be working every weekend? Do you want to have a certain certain hours that you want to work? You need to look at the volume sold, the prices they have, um, and some, some big ones are the labor required and the additional or required costs associated with that. Like I mentioned, a farm store is going to have a lot more overhead costs and labor involved. So just look into all those and see how well they fit the goals of your farm. Um, and then you can pick which marketing. You can decide which marketing channel is right for your farm. Uh, feel free to reach out for me. If, reach out to me if you have any questions, if you want any more information or help getting started with any of these channels. Thank you.